Today I'm going to show you my favorite drill for training hand independence when you're playing guitar fast. Hand independence simply means when one hand does something, for example, the picking hand is hitting the strings really hard with a lot of force, with a lot of volume, the fretting hand should not become more tense in response to what the pick is doing. Of course it works the other way too, when the fretting hand does something like playing a bar chord or playing bent note vibrato, the picking hand should not tense up either. When you have great hand independence, playing guitar fast feels really easy. And not only does it feel easy, it also sounds better too. That's because you don't have to choose between playing guitar with a lot of power and articulation at the expense of tensing up your whole body to do it, or playing guitar with as little tension as possible where you're sitting like this, but you have no power in your pick attack and your playing just sounds weak. In my opinion, one of the top masters of hand independence among shredders is the great Paul Gilbert. He is the guy who balances extremely articulate pick attack with super super relaxed fretting hand. And I've done a whole video breaking down his technique. If you want to check it out, watch the video right here. But for now, let's talk about how to develop this much coveted hand independence in your playing. The drill I have for this is going to focus on training your pick attack to become louder or softer independently of what your left hand is doing. And to do this properly, you're going to need to unplug your guitar because anytime you do anything involving your pick attack or articulation, you want to practice it in the most unforgiving way possible and playing unplugged is the great way to do just that. What you're going to do is select any lick or exercise or scale fragment or scale pattern you already know and you're going to play it up and down over and over non-stop without speeding up, without slowing down and all that's going to change is the amount of pick attack you use. For example, let's say you're going to practice this fragment. You can use this fragment, you can use a different one, doesn't matter, but this is an example that I'm giving you. And what you're going to do is first play the lick twice using the weakest pick attack you can possibly get away with. Make the notes really, really soft without slowing down. Keep Stay at the same tempo, but make the pick strokes really soft and make sure the pick doesn't start moving around in your hand. So after two repetitions of that, continue playing the lick non-stop and play it now with moderate articulation, moderate pick attack at the same speed. Then you're going to play it twice more using the most powerful pick attack you can. Then you're going to play it twice again at moderate pick attack and then twice again with soft pick attack yet again. It's going to sound like this. This is actually not as easy to do as it may seem, but when you get comfortable with the basic idea of varying the articulation from soft to medium to hard to medium to soft to medium to hard, you want to start focusing more on what the fretting hand is feeling. As you get louder and more articulate with the pick, the fretting hand should not tense up in response. And when you get softer, with the pick attack, you should not feel your fretting hand start relaxing. If you do feel your fretting hand start to relax as you get softer with the pick attack, you're doing it wrong. And if you feel this happening, you can do one of two things. One is to simply slow everything down and start and do the exercise at a slower speed where you can control the fretting hand and keep the level of tension there constant and very low. The other thing you can do is simply take fewer notes and play them either at the same speed or slower speed if you want. So let's say you take just one note like the G note on the D string and just do tremolo picking and go back and forth between very soft, moderate, hard articulation, moderate, soft, moderate, hard, and so on, and focus on hand independence once again. Keep slowing down if you need to, and keep playing fewer notes if you need to, to find the spot where you can control what the fretting hand is feeling. And again, you want your fretting hand level of tension to stay constant. It needs to be relaxed to begin with, and it should not become more tense as you pick harder, and it should not start to relax as you pick softer. And while you're at it, you can also check the rest of your body for tension as well. You can check your jaw, your shoulders, your stomach, your thighs, your calves, your feet, make sure everything stays nice and relaxed. And again, keep slowing down as much as you need to and make sure none of those body parts respond or react by tensing up or relaxing as the level of pick attack changes. If you've seen my other video about guitar technique exercises, you know I talk about something called phase one practice and phase two practice. In phase one, you're developing your basic fundamental guitar technique motions or core skills that lead to good, efficient, and effortless guitar technique. And in phase two, you're applying these fundamentals to different guitar playing contexts via exercises. And as you keep getting 
getting better with hand independence and other foundational phase one guitar technique elements, all of your phase two playing is going to keep getting better as well. Even if you have 500 exercises and guitar licks and solos that are still yet to be mastered from phase two, once you improve a foundational part of your playing, like hand independence, which is part of everything you play in phase two, Everything in phase two will have no choice but to keep getting better as well. That's the beauty of this kind of approach. So use this hand independence training drill every day if possible, or you can do it three or four times a day. That will be pretty good too. And do this for five, 10, 15 minutes per day, depending on how much total practice time you have. And you will see some pretty significant improvements starting the very first time you do it. If you want some help with building your guitar speed, and if you've already tried the old start slow and gradually building up speed method, and that hasn't worked for you, hit the link below. I'm gonna show you a new way to build speed that's pretty different from anything you've probably seen before is gonna show you how to build guitar speed without doing any slow practice at all. And if you do what I show you at the link below, you can very often start seeing improvements in how fast and how clean you can play as early as tomorrow. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell so you're notified every time I upload new videos just like this for you. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. I'll see you next time.